let's work given a series phase with this equation that is equal to the f x and y and what we would like to do is we would like to find out the maximum and minimum points for the surface. Before doing this, let's quickly review how we found the maximum and minimum points for the single variable functions. So let's say we're given a function with the equation y is equal to the f of x. And I see from the graph that at the point a and b, the function reaches its local minimum and local maximum. And the idea of finding of them was coming from the slope of the tangent lines at those points. I see from the graph that the slope of the tangent lines at those two points are equal to the zero. And I can find the slope of the tangent line by taking the derivative of this curve at this point a or at this point b. So the slope or the derivative of the function should be equal to the zero. And this is how we need to find out those points. We need to find all the points where the first derivative of the function is going to be equal to the zero. The problem was, so you see from the graph that the tangent line at the maximum point n and the minimum point are both horizontal, right? And how we need to find out, figure out, how we need to figure out that one of the points is the maximum point and the other one is the minimum point without actually drawing this curve. In order to do this, we need to use the second derivative test. Right? So I see at this point the function is concave upward. It means that the second derivative at this point is going to be positive. Right? So if the function is upward, so graphically or logically, I would understand that this one is the local minimum point. I see from the graph that at this point the function is concave downward. Right? The second derivative at this point a is less than zero. So the, when the function is concave downward, so then the function reaches its maximum. So there were some guidelines how to set the, So this is the guidelines how to find the critical points and then identify whether they are the maximum points or the minimum points using the second derivative test. But there was a special function. If we continue this like this, so and graphically I see that the tangent line here is going to be horizontal again, right? So the derivative of the function at this point c, let's say, it's going to be also zero, but I see from the graph that it is neither maximum and linear minimum. So there are this kind of points as well. So now let's go back to the multidimensional function or to the surfaces and let's try to figure out, uh, let's try to construct the ideas of finding the maximum and minimum points analogously as we did for the single variable calculus. So I s what, what I would like to do is I would like to create a tangent planes, planes for all the points. And from the graph, I see that at this point is going to be the minimum point, right? For the local minimum point. And let's make a tangent line there. So graphically, the tangent line would look like this, which is perfectly horizontal, right? So what does it mean? It means that at the local maximum or minimum points, the tangent plane to the curve is going to be the horizontal plane. And mathematically, I can define this that so the t vectors on this plane are going to be horizontal. So in order to build up the horizontal tangent plane, we need to put on the plane the t vectors, which are also horizontal, and which means that the rate of change in this direction, x, and in this direction, y, should be equal to the zero. What does it mean? The partial derivative of the function with respect to the x should be equal to the zero, and the partial derivative of the f with respect to the y also should be equal to the zero. So do you remember we defined a gradient vector as a vector which has the two components, the partial derivative of the f and partial derivative of the y, and this, should, this gradient vector should be equal to the zero at this local minimum point. And if, I, if you find the, grade, uh, the magnitude of the gradient, it is going to be equal to the zero. It perfectly matches with our theory about local maximums and local minimums, right? So the meaning of the gradient is the maximum rate of change of a surface. If the maximum rate of change is equal to the zero, it means that the tangent plane, which I would like to do, which I would like to put there, is going to be horizontal tangent plane. There are some problems here. So let's, let's consider this surface, which is given with the equation z is equal to x squared minus y squared. So if I find out the points where the 
partial derivatives with respect to the x and with respect to the y to be equal to the zero, it's going to be this point with the coordinate zero. So if I make the tangent plane there, I can see that the tangent plane is a horizontal, but the problem is like this. So if I cut out, so this is, let's say, the x direction, and this is going to be, let's say, y direction. So if I cut out the, if I look to this graph in the z y plane, I see that the my curve on that plane is going to look like this, and this point is going to be the local minimum. But if I look to this, if I cut this curve and look to this in the in the in the angle of z x plane, then I see that the curve when I cut it, it's going to be like this. Right? It means that this point where the tangent plane is horizontal is going to be a minimum if I if I look this in the yz plane and it's going to be maximum if I look to this at the zx plane. So I can see them more precisely if I cut them in the zx in yz planes. So on the yz plane, so this is going to be z and this is the y. So this point is going to be the minimum point, right? You see this? And on the x, z plane, so this point is going to be the maximum point. So this point is neither maximum, neither ma minimum point, and we're going to call this point as the settle point. You see, so analogously to the single variable uh, functions, we've got a tangent plane which is horizontal, but this point is neither maximum and neither minimum, and we call, we're going to call this point as a set of points. So now the idea is like this. So if I am given a point where the tangent plane is horizontal, how to identify whether this point is the maximum or minimum or neither maximum and minimum. So in order to do this, we're going to use again a second derivative for the multivariable function. So let's say we're given a function which has the first and the second derivatives. Uh, the point P was the uh, uh, coordinates A and B. The tangent plane is horizontal. It means that the partial derivative of the function with respect to the x and with respect to the y are equal to the zero. And we would like to calculate the second derivatives and write down this in the form. So let us calculate this number. So the second derivative of the function at the point A, B with respect to the x, x, multiplied to the second derivative y, y at this point a, b, minus the second derivative, we take the partial derivative with respect to the x, then with respect to the y at this point a and b, and score this. And we're going to denote this number as a d. So if this number d is positive, then the point a, b is either minimum either maximum. In order to understand whether this point is the maximum or ma minimum, I need to look to the sign of this term. So if the second derivative at this point with respect to the x is positive, it means that this point is minimum point, right? Because it's going to be concave upward. So a, b point is minimum. And if this is negative, so if the second derivative at this point is negative, then this point is going to be a maximum because it's going to be concave downward with respect to the x, right? In the x, z plane. So if the d is negative, then the point with the coordinates a and b is the saddle point. neither maximum, neither minimum. And if the t is equal to the zero, the second derivative test doesn't work, it's inconclusive. So let's do an example in order to apply our theory. So let's say we're given a function with the equation x4 plus y4 minus 4xy plus 1. Right? And we would like to find the maximum, minimum, or the settle points. So in order to do this, first of all, we need to find the first partial derivatives. So partial derivative of the f with respect to the x is going to be 4x cubed minus 4y. And the partial derivative of the f with respect to the y is going to be 4y cubed 
minus 4x. So they should be 0. So I need to look for the points with the coordinates x and y so that they are going to satisfy both of the equation at the same time. So I can see from the first one it's going to be x cubed minus y equation is equal to the 0 equation. So y cubed minus x is equal to the 0 it's the second equation. I can find out the x is equal to the y cubed from the second equation and I can substitute this to the first in order to obtain y cubed in a cube, right? So from here we obtained that the x is equal to the y cube and substitute this to the first equation. So y cube in a cube minus y is equal to the 0. It's going to be y in a power of 9. If I take out the y from the brackets, it's going to be y in a power of 8 minus 1 is equal to the 0. And there are three values of the y which are going to satisfy this equation. They are 0, 1, and minus 1. So if I substitute the three values of the y to this equation, I can obtain that x is equal to the 0, x is equal to the 1, x is equal to the minus 1. So we've got a three critical points where the tangent plane are, is going to be horizontal. Right? Now what I need to do is I need to find the uh, d, the value of the d for all of the three points. And the value of the d is found by multiplying the second derivative of the f with respect to the x. So f y y minus f x y in the square. So I need to evaluate this for all the three points. So let's do this. So second derivative of the function with respect to the x, it means that I need to take the derivative from this with respect to the x. It's going to be 12x squared, simply, right? Multiplied. So the second derivative of the f with respect to the twice y, it's going to be, I need to take the derivative from this with respect to the y, it's going to be 12y squared minus I need to take the derivative from this with respect to the y or from this with respect to the x. Both of the answers are going to be the same. So the derivative of the f x with respect to the y, it's going to be, so this is this term is going to be 0 because this is the constant since I'm taking the derivative with respect to the y. And the second term is going to be minus 4. The same is if I take the derivative from f y with respect to the x, right? This is going to be zero because I'm taking the derivative with respect to the x, and this is going to be minus four again, right? So this is going to be minus four in the square, or simply sixteen, right? If I put this, it's going to be one hundred forty-four x square y square minus sixteen. So let us check the values of the d for all the three points. If I substitute zero and zero, it's going to be minus sixteen. If I substitute 1 and 1, it's going to be 144 minus 16. This is the positive number. If I substitute minus 1 and minus 1, it's going to be again 144 minus 16, which is also the positive number. At this, so at this point was the coordinate 0, 0 is a settled point because d is negative at this point. And this, at this two points, the d are positive. They are either minimum, either maximum points. In order to identify this, we need to look for the sign of the f, x, x. At this point, right? Fortunately, fxx is 12x squared, and in both of these points, it is going to be the same number, which is going to be simply and minus 1, minus 1 as well. It's going to be 12, right? It means that they are positive, so it is going to be concave upward at those points, and at these two points, with the coordinates 1 and 1, right? 1 and 1, and minus 1 and 1, so the function is going to reach its local minimums.